What is Stimulate? Well, Stimulate is also a pretty good product. We're very proud of this one. I said earlier, Stimulate is the um, the offense. You know, you can't win a game without an offense and a defense. Um, it is an EPA registered plant growth regulator. It's a plant growth promoter. We prefer to call it that, but EPA doesn't have a classification for those yet. So it is registered as an EPA plant growth regulator. Uh, it's a mix of three growth hormones that drive plant growth in a two to one to one ratio of cytokine and oxidant gym. Uh, when you use it, you're going to get enhanced seed germination, improved root development, early plant development, and more efficient plants. So when you need to kick those plants right up out of the ground, Stimulate is a really good use. Oh, Stimulate is also uh, formulated to mix with just about anything. So Stimulate makes other products better. Uh, here's just a seed treatment. So this is a control versus Stimulate at the two ounce rate. Uh, Stimulate does, uh, there is a Stimulate for commercial seed treaters. But for the most part, we're using Stimulate uh, Yield Enhancer as a seed treatment on most farms. Uh, you can ask your local rep about the uh, 10x concentration for, um, for seed treatment where you, you don't have a lot of space. But here, these uh, differences are pretty shocking. And uh, it's pretty easy to note the uniformity, the size. I mean, look at all these holes. You're going to get a lot of holes here. This isn't going to be a very good field. But here, Everything is up and running. It made all those little beans pop the same day. So that's what becomes really important. What our record yield winners really have taught us is, um, and I know this seems, this seems challenging, but uh, most of these record winning fields, they germinate within 12 hours. So uh, you plant the seed, it sits in the ground for a day or two, and then within 12, 24 hours, all the plants emerge at once. Um, it's pretty shocking. If uh, you look at Jason Watson, he uses time-lapse photography to do some of this, and it's just pretty cool. It sits there for about a day. You see the sun rise and set, and then you see all these little corn and beans shooting out at once. So uh, try flagging by day, and uh, a noticeable response. Give it a try. Here's some of the beans uh, dug out. Here's the control versus the stimulated seed treated. And stimulate is an auction product. Um, auxins are usually made in the shoots, and they drip down the xylem into the roots. So auxins are responsible for the plant's apical dominance, and that's pretty evenly seen in this field. So here you see this, this crazy seedling going on. It doesn't know which way is up. It doesn't know what's down. All of these have these twists in the radical or the root system. And here, these are all long, straight, deep, fat, well-branched. It's the perfect Christmas tree type appearance. This is from the added hormone. When you look at the tops of plants, you'll see that we have more leaf tissue. So these are the baby leaves versus the real first adult leaves that are actually making energy. Storage make energy. So they're bigger. These plants are more developed. Uh, these plants have a head start. You know, just like the Head Start program at your local high school. The other thing that's really cool is all the damage on these plants. Well, this is a combination of insect and wind. So if you start to look here, there's less damage. The treated plants were stronger. They were bigger. They survived the stress event. Uh, this single seed treatment at 2 ounce per hundred weight did increase yield. And that's always great. When you look back here at wheat, we have uh, control versus stimulate, control versus stimulate, and uh, clearly a more prolific, prolific root system. So more roots, more brains, more water, more nutrients. Simple, right? Let's say that again. More roots, more brains, more access to water, more access to nutrients, more access to the products that we spray early in the season that hit the soil and not the plant. So this is a much healthier plant that will yield much higher. Look at the difference as they grow. Totally different. Always go out there. I encourage all of you guys to get in the field. Go look at what these seed treatments and in-furrow applications have done. Most of you guys have planted. There's a lot of plants on the ground. And for those of you who didn't, let's get some in-furrow and seed treatment out there.
It's insurance. So what are hormones? You know, what is a, a registered three-way mix of uh, plants' phytohormones? And I'll take a sip of my coffee. So this here is a classic example. <clears throat> it comes out of some of Darwin's work. Uh, it goes way back. But what happened, they found that the, it was the coleoptiles of oat, um, oat coleoptiles, or oat, little seedling oats. And they found out that plants bend towards the light. We've all seen it, you know, that plants uh, go in front of your house, your shrubs will grow out, they don't grow into the bricks. So it's the hormones in the plant that determine this, that manage the growth. So if your hawksins are on the curved end, this is where the sun hits. So sun degrades the auxin, causes a higher concentration on the outside, and that causes more cell division, causes growth, and the plant bends. They actually took little discs and were able to, to, um, to prove this. So that's pretty cool. So hormones are the chemical signals that are produced in one part of the plant, and then they're transported to another part of the plant where they trigger a response. So if auxin, for instance, triggered a response where it was made, the plant's going to die. It needs to be transported away because it's so strong. One of the problems with some of the synthetic auxins, like 2,4-D, is it can't be transported, so it kills where it touches. So these hormones are chemical signals that are produced and that affect this chain that we just talked about. So you're going to have some gene activity probably over here to the left on this side of the graph. This is going to cause the synthesis. Your hormones get created and they're going to determine whether or not they're going to grow, whether they're going to conjugate, or whether we're going to transport them to some place that can receive them. Once they get into the roots where they could be received, it's going to trigger a biological function, a gene cascade and a biological function. So phytohormones are really small molecules that are super systemic, that are able to go from one point to another and cause a response. That's the most simplest definition I think I can come up with there. Hormones are in every plant, they're in every tissue in different concentrations. By managing these concentrations, by balancing these concentrations, we're able to dictate a given biological response. That's what we all need to do, right? <clears throat> Just some examples of really cool hormones that we play with. You got your uh, IAA, there's ABA, the abscisic acid, there's uh, zeatin, so cytokinin. We use uh, biologically identical analogs to this in our excite, in our stimulate. Classic gibberellic acid, also in this stimulate. And then, you know, some new hormones that are still, we're still working on, that people are still discovering. So you'll start to see an increase in hormones like this. This is the hormone that allows plants to talk to each other, allows plants to know that they're under insect attack, start to defend. We have this hormone. This has been discovered a few years ago, and we're just starting to really use a lot of it. But this is the, uh, the hormone that triggers the systemic acquired resistance. Really cool. It can help fight virus. It can do a lot of good stuff like that. And we have some new hormones that, are, are, that need more discovery, need more thought. So this list will likely grow. But what they all have in common is they're produced in one place, then they're transported to another place to dictate a response, to ultimately manage the hormone symphony. And different, it's not the concentration of hormones, because too much of any good thing can be a problem. Too much auxin can be a herbicide. Too much cytokinin was responsible for all those exploding watermelons we read about in the paper. I think it was uh, CPPU, if I'm not mistaken. But it's the ratio that dictates the response, not necessarily the concentration. So keep an eye on the ratios of these products when you're out there comparing and contrasting. More is not always better, but the balance is where you need to be. So if you have a high ratio of cytokine into auxin, it's going to favor shoot production. 
if you have the opposite, more auxin than cytokinin, you're going to get a proliferation of roots. So it's important to balance these ratios so that we could get a balanced whole plant so the plant can produce an ear, can produce lots of pods, can maintain those pods so that they don't abort and fall over the floor. So it's really important to watch your ratios, guys. Keep an eye on your ratios. Here's some cool pictures. So too much cytokinin, and you get all these shoots coming out of cell culture. If you've never played with tissue culture, I encourage you all to buy one of those small high school kits. This stuff is cool. You make blobs of cells, and then you treat them with chemicals, and you can make an ear come out of this piece of chewing gum. Very interesting. You hit the blob of cells with auxin, and it turns into a ball of roots. You could buy these right online. You've got to try it. Um, the right ratio of perfect balance will result in a totipotent cell, a cell that's undifferentiated and ready to become anything. These are what are known in humans as stem cells. So we want lots of stem cells in our plants that can become anything we need them to. Some more pictures. Yeah, but go buy one of these kits and play with this. Pretty cool. What other hormone stories do we know about? Maybe uh, hormone stories that are responsible for feeding the world. Well, who knows uh, Borlaug? I talked about the Borlaug Institute, but Borlaug is not the name of a building. Um, Norman Borlaug was probably one of the best plant breeders ever to walk the earth. Uh, what started as an accident, he found some short, uh, short plants. Uh, these were short rices that just wouldn't grow. And when he was walking these fields, he was intrigued on how he could make more of them because they didn't lodge and they got higher yields. Very simple, you know. So he started playing around. He would cross the short ones with the bigger ones, and he actually went on to basically write what we know of as the... Um, uh, what do you call it? He basically wrote the um, the plant breeding books. So Borlaug is a pretty good guy. Oh, anyway, he found out later, you know, a long time after he first discovered this, that the uh, deficient grain was deficient in GA. It was short because it didn't have the right balance of hormones. So uh, we like Borlaug. We named the building after Borlaug because what we do is manipulate the um, hormone ratio to get the response. Now Norman used to do it through breeding and he would find plants that made different levels of these chemicals whereas Stoller does it with exogenously applied nutrients and hormones. So we get this response without all the breeding and development. So uh, we're able to turn your best cultivars today into high producing uh, you know, productive cultivars. So cool guy, everybody should know about. Stimulate is this two to one to one mixture. It's our patented uh, hormone mixture. It is EPA registered. Uh, because of that, we do a lot of trade with Stimulate, and uh, we're able to add Stimulate to just about anything you're currently making. So if you have your own blend, uh, uh, your own blend of products or whatever it might be, your own fertilizer, your own starter that you're going out and giving to the farmers. You can just put some stimulate in it, and it's going to work better. So for all you farmers on the list, go to your retailer, tell them to put stimulate inside the tank, and uh, when they're applying the, uh, the starter solution, and you will notice a difference. Um, stimulate's cool because it's technical grade growth hormones. Uh, when compared to some of the other biological type hormones, uh, you'll notice some of them are plant extracts. Uh, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of variables there. So if I'm extracting my hormone from a living crop, every time it could be a little bit different. Plants are extremely sensitive to hormones, so that small difference in the bottle could be a large difference in the field. So I always look for this 2 to 1 ratio, 2 to 1 to 1 ratio of cytokinin to auxin and gibberellin, and uh, always look for the source of the hormones. Um, as Jerry would say, uh, we always get the question about seaweeds. They go, oh, Mr. Stoller, what do you what do you say about think about seaweeds? And he would always come out and say, well, seaweeds are the only thing I would use if I was farming seaweed. And then everybody laughs. But he's right. 
So year after year, you're familiar with your corn and soybean. Do you always get the same yield? Do you always get the same diseases? Is every year managed the same? Never. So why would you expect the yield of seaweed to be the same every year? It's subject to the same environmental variables that our corn is. So always make sure you get a technical grade growth hormone in a two to one to one ratio, and you're good. Stimulate is, uh, is perfect for that. Here we wanted to compare it against other hormone mixtures in the field. Uh, here's our stimulate at the 2 to 1 to 1 ratio versus a, a competitor's product at a 3 to 1 to 2 ratio. So we do have a, a higher load of, of hormones in this one, but it's not concentration. It's all about the ratio and source. Stimulate is the ideal ratio that we patented. Please refer to Google Patents and look it up. And uh, the PGR source is all technical grade. It comes out of the bottle. It comes out of the lab exactly the same. High, start with high quality ingredients. You're going to get a high quality product. It also doesn't have any minerals in it so that you can mix it with the minerals that your farmers need. Not all growers have the same mineral requirements. So why not mix stimulate with the customized mineral package for your field. Not the neighbor's field, your field. That's what Stimulate allows you to do. Uh, here's some outside research. Uh, we didn't take part in this, but they did use our products. Uh, it was the McGregor Field Day and Small Grain Trials at the Miller Research and Extension Farm. Uh, this happened in Indiana. Uh, and here we're just looking at plants uh, per row foot on two different dates. And when you look down, our Stimulate outperformed all the other products that were tested there that day. So by this October 31st, this Halloween measure, all oh, uh, Stimulate definitely rose above everything else. Uh, we saw a 12.7% increase from the untreated control and a 20% increase over a similar hormone-based product. Uh, so Stimulate is providing significance at the 0.10 level, or 90%, uh, 90% of the time, which is uh, highly significant. Oh, and to mention, this was a very stressful day. It was a stressful field. Uh, we were suffering from extreme uh, drought, and uh, Stimulate was able to outperform everything else it was compared against. So we do some other, we, we do a lot of work with a lot of different companies. And we do encourage them to test our products, to put our products out there in the field and let us know what they think. And uh, here we compared uh, Ascend to Stimulate. Uh, we use similar use rates, uh, 3.2 and 4 ounces per acre, respectively. And this was a V5 application with herbicide. So put these products out with your herbicide, and you'll be very happy. Um, the crop was corn. It was just a comparison plot, you know, block next to block. And again, this was in central Indiana. And uh, just look at those differences. Stimulate treated plots had more leaf area to collect energy. You can see the thicker stalks. It's able, the plant here will never be able to make enough energy in any day to fill all the babies on this ear that are going to generate. So what it has to do its entire life is store energy. You know, just just like a woman who's having a baby, stores lots of energy and then releases it at the right time. So here there's evidence of that. Um, plants store energy in the stalk, in the roots. You use stimulate, more leaves, more energy, fatter stalks, higher yield. And they weighed a lot more. So here's our model. So this is our stimulate. Stimulate has affected the cytokinin, oxygen, and gibberellin. Here's our bioforge. This fixes ethylene and to some extent manages these late season timings. Now by using both products, the right times for the right events, you're able to standardize this symphony that the plant goes through to go from seed to yield in your bin. And that's how you maximize the genetic potential of your plants. 
So it's going to work. Here's your ratio, the roots of the brains of the plant, the shoots, where a lot of this auxin comes from, the gibberellins, they're going to promote your germination, cell elongation. It's going to directly offset ADA, which puts the plant to sleep. It's got some auxin in there, this IBA. This causes cell division in the root tissues as it drips down. It gives you apical dominance, what I like to call that Christmas tree appearance. And it gives you these responses, how it responds to light. Whereas your cytokinins, they're going to cause lots of cell division in the shoot tissue. Cytokines give you shoots. You're going to get a delay of leaf senescence. You're going to have greener plants longer so that they're able to collect more energy and fill more pods. And uh, this, you're going to have a bigger increase of the, the auxins there. And this is going to cause more nodule development. So stimulate increases exudation, which is the food to the nodules, which ultimately gives you more nitrogen from the air. So this is our three-way. Yield equals an increase of genetic expression, which is our stimulate, minus the losses from the environment, which is protected or minimized with BioForge. So to maximize yield, you push the crop with stimulate, and prevent loss with BioForge. Um, here's just some root growth in Petri dishes. I wanted to show you what the product was really capable of. Uh, this is how we work on our dose responses to figure out where we need to be. So here, stimulate, particularly at these labeled rates, they show you a dramatic increase in roots. Then you start to get to these higher and higher rates. Uh, we designed it this way. We'd like to see where it falls off. Uh, you know, this is equivalent to way more than the label, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine anyone's going to be spraying this high. But it's proof positive that the model works, and it's proof positive that the hormones are all active, because too much means less in the hormone world. It's all about ratio and balance and source. So what is Stimulate going to do to the rate of root growth? So these are just uh, stimulate. We dosed Arabidopsis, and then we measured the plants four days after four days of growth. So uh, stimulate is always going to increase root growth when used at the right rate. So here's the measurements from the Petri dishes. So here, once we get to these higher rates, it's not going to work. This is how we design our labels. This right here is equivalent to your 8 to 16 ounce rate, give or take. So 4, 8, 16 or 4, 8, 16. But anyway, at really high doses, uh, you might get a reduction in lateral branching, but you're not going to be at these levels in the field. And uh, right here is where you're going to use it. And then we did this on, uh, on winter wheat. Uh, this is three trial locations in 2013, uh, Kansas and two in North Dakota. Uh, Stimulate works really well on grasses, and I particularly like it once I get into the Dakotas and Minnesota because uh, it gets really cold up there. You need to push the crop. You don't have all day. You know, down here in Texas, I think we're growing, uh, we're growing plants for 10 months out of the year. Uh, California, you're the same. But uh, in the Dakotas, Canada, Jeff Bedard, I see you're on here. Man, you don't have much time to play with. So Stimulate seems to work real well up there because you can push the season. You can increase uh, the development. So control versus stimulate at three ounces per hundred weight on the seed. We got a noticeable increase in yield. And these are from uh, three locations, averaged over three locations, Kansas and North Dakota. So pretty impressive work. Here is from Ohio. This time we did uh, six trial locations. And we wanted to see really, the point of this study was not to evaluate stimulate. But we wanted to see that stimulate provides added benefit to acceleron. I mean, how many people are just seed treating with one product? You know, they're going to have a complete package. So we did uh, control versus a uh, complete control. This is naked seed versus an acceleron treated seed versus acceleron and stimulate. In all cases, we got an increase of yield. Over six trial locations. This is pretty consistent. What's really cool, though, and really important is this, this really shows that stimulate is compatible with the other seed treatments. So just add it right into the slurry and treat the seed and you'll always get a nice response. 
when we looked at some of the benefits, we did a seed treatment, V6, V4 foliar, and then a fungicide treatment. These were our rates, two ounce, four ounce, four ounce, and uh, the tillage, all the details. Uh, this is the fertility. We're always using our products and it did it on top of a fertility program. So all the stats, and then we actually measured every little bit of that plant. So we went everywhere from the length to the width, uh, the rows, the kernels, the counted everything, and even got bushels. So you'll notice our stimulate program when compared to the untreated control, we were able to get an increase across the board. We did get longer ears, wider ears, more kernels per row. These are what we're actually harvesting. More kernels equals higher yield. Ultimately, more kernels per ear, and in the end, we got an increase in yield. That's what we're all looking for out here, right? That's what pays the bills. So stimulate, how are you going to use it? Once again, flexible application strategies, strong seed treatment. It's great in furrow. It mixes with starter, any starter. Uh, it's good as a foliar with herbicides and fungicides. You'll find it compatible in all tank mixes. You're going to get your three growth hormones. More importantly, you're getting the right source and the right ratio. But these hormones promote growth, and they push plant development We'll recommend applications at two ounces on your seed or four to eight ounces per application in furrow or as a foliar. This four ounce rate is typically applied every time you cross the field. You can't have too much. I don't typically go above eight ounces in a single application. Then again, looking at your growth and development curves, you can use stimulate across the board where you're looking for a strong offense. So bioforge, defensive, stop loss, stimulate, offensive, push growth, push yield. So we'll put it out any time in this, uh, this life cycle. In terms of beans, also we're, we're increasing the oxen load of the plant. We're starting to move things around. So by having more oxen in the plant, you're going to have more nodules because it's that drip that keeps the nodules alive. So you can use it at any time, even in reproductive stage, to support your fill, your pod development, your flowering, your growth, etc. So ask us more, inquire more about uh, when, how to use it, and you'll find in just about all corners of the earth, there is a qualified uh, Stoller agronomist representative that's uh, willing to come to your field and work with you on these custom programs. So just quick in summary, stimulates EPA registered. You can put it in everything you have, three growth hormones, and it will drive plant growth. So that, I think, is about the end. Um, I see a few hands up here. I guess I've gone over my time. But for those of you who know me, that's common. Um, I could talk forever. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I want you all to uh, take out the calendars on your phone and save the date. Uh, these are weekly. Uh, we're not going to be having one next week. We're all out of town. But um, the next uh, Stoller Select webinar will be on May 5th. And we're going to talk about uh, making the most of your herbicide application. So we'll be talking a little bit about a product. Uh, it's a nutrient package designed to go with glyphosate. Um, for this commodity market, for this year, it's priced uh, very nicely so that it's not a dent in anyone's pockets and you can still get the micros you need and uh, it will offset the damage of the glyphosate on the crop. It's going to be at May 5th, 8.30 a.m. The following one, which is not up here, is um, May 12th, that's that, that next week, and uh, there we're actually bringing in our scientist from Argentina and uh, her, she's a weed scientist and what really does it for her is looking how we can offset uh, yield uh, damage from herbicides. So a really cool project. Uh, she was able to show how the herbicides we use actually cause a yield reduction. And then she evaluated a number of tools to reduce that yield reduction. So don't miss these. Uh, remember again that all these webinars, they're formatted for your cell phone, your iPad, your WhatsApp. Um, so you can watch these things as you're riding in the tractor. So I want to say thank you to everybody. 
Oh, for you, those of you who don't know him, this is Dan Arkles. Uh, he's working with Luke Cash, our dealer select out there. Um, just another great farmer. So I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for being our business partners moving forward. Thank you, farmers and growers, dealers selects. And uh, if you have any questions, contact myself. Contact your local rep. Type in your question in the chat section. If you are a CCA, this was a registered course, so you did just get credit for it. Make sure under the chat section you send me your full name and your CCA number, and we'll do all the paperwork for you. So without further ado, thank you for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you on May 5th. Thank you very much, guys. and. Uh,